It's been nine years since the last Armored Core game by From Software, and a lot has changed since then. This franchise skipped an entire console generation, during which time From Software doubled down on the Souls-like formula and hit higher heights with games like Elden Ring than I think any of us could ever have predicted. But now Armored Core is back, with the fires of Rubicon coming to all platforms sometime in 2023. It's actually been in development for so long that it's even coming to last-gen consoles. And while I know some of you are nostalgic for Armored Core and are super excited to see it return, I think most of us were probably watching TGA and asking, what even is Armored Core? What is happening in this trailer? What's the gameplay like? And will this Armored Core be any different to previous entries in the franchise? And last but not least, we were asking, will it be Souls-like? We can answer a lot of these questions. We don't just have the cinematic trailer and previous games to work off of at this point. We also now have a Steam page. We have the official website, a press release, and some very credible leaks. So let's dive into it. So first, what is Armored Core? Well, technically this is an Armored Core. It's a mech, an armored unit for the human core inside, which makes use of so-called muscle tracer technology that allows for the human's integrated control of the machine. In past games, you usually take on the role of a mercenary. You are a raven pilot, open to any mission that is sent your way, fighting on behalf of corporations and governments and rebel groups that are all fighting for control of this dystopian post-apocalyptic world and its resources. So how different then is the story of the new Armored Core to all of these past games? Well, let's use the story descriptions on the official Steam page to help break down this trailer. It all starts with a red light, a spark that suddenly alights, sort of like a nervous system, with characteristic red lightning and energy that goes on to appear in the apocalyptic scenes to follow. What looks like an entire solar system has just been enveloped in flames, which then leads to a shot of the ashen aftermath with the words, feed the fire and let the last cinders burn. So what are we seeing here? Well, according to the official Steam page for the game, a mysterious new substance was discovered on the remote planet Rubicon 3. As an energy source, this substance was expected to dramatically advance humanity's technological and communications capabilities. Instead, this substance caused a catastrophe that engulfed the planet and the surrounding stars in flames and storms, forming a burning star system. And then, almost half a century later, the same substance resurfaces on Rubicon 3, a planet now contaminated and sealed off by the catastrophe. Extraterrestrial corporations and resistance groups now fight over control of the substance. The player infiltrates Rubicon as an independent mercenary and finds themselves in a struggle over the substance with the corporations and other factions. So here we're seeing what is clearly a return to this contaminated, ashen, sealed off planet. Returning to a post-apocalyptic world is definitely nothing new for Souls fans. We see a mech pick up what looks like a mechanized arm or a weapon from the ashen wreckage. Presumably they're adding it to the pile of loot or supplies on their back. And then explosions on a distant bridge get this mech's attention. These explosions are from this battle, where one AC unit destroys some smaller mechs before engaging in combat with a rival of very similar design. It's kind of hard to keep track of all this action, but we see an energy shield, a dash, some sort of EMP goes off, and this huge stake driver is plunged into the chest of one mech and then withdrawn at the end of their fight. A variety of other mechs then show, there's machine gun fire and helicopters, and the main character mech then becomes aware of all of this, and they dash. They equip a machine gun, equip a shoulder missile kit, they change visor and dash off screen. It's just awesome. It's gritty and it's metal and it's very armored core. I also find it interesting that many of the mechs have the same red glint in their eyes that we see at the start of the cinematic, which I think might show that they're using this mysterious new energy source, but we'll talk about that energy source a bit later. 
So now that you're familiar with the story of Armored Core, you know, new and old, let's talk gameplay. The Steam page for this game states that players will assemble and pilot their own mech with 3D maneuverability to freely move through three-dimensional fast-paced missions, take on difficult challenges, and overwhelm your enemies with dynamic movements that make full use of ranged and melee combat. But to really understand what this means, we have to go back and look at gameplay from past games. What you're seeing here is early gameplay from Armored Core for Answer for PS3. The gameplay in in these games often begins with mission briefings that let you know what you're about to do and how to do it and why. For example, in this early mission, I have to be strapped onto a Vanguard Ovid boost unit, which lets me rocket through the enemy's invasion units before then turning around and trying to destroy the survivors. Once I'm grounded on my mech, the true armored core combat begins. Combat is three-dimensional, it's fast-paced, and it requires a lot of multitasking and resource management. I have a jetpack if I want to fly, I have a speed boost if I need to escape, I have two weapons active at the same time that I can fire simultaneously, Right now I'm holding a chain gun and a melee blade, but I can also swap each weapon for a secondary weapon if the situation demands it. I need to dodge, stay locked on, scan the environment, manage my resources, my ammunition, my movement, which guns I should be firing. This game has a really high skill ceiling and I am nowhere near hitting it. I am so bad at this game, but I can see the appeal. There are even PvP modes in recent games that some fans speak very highly of, and I'll leave some good links in the description if you want to learn more about the series, because I really don't know that much at this point. Anyway, it's very mission-based, and I think the new game will be as well. There are even bonus objectives in a lot of these missions, and at the end you get a score and a reward and currency that you can use to customize your machine and prepare for your next missions. There's an insane depth to the customization in these games, and yeah, that's the gist of it. And you can only really experience this now if you have an older gen console, because a lot of these games do not emulate very well. I don't think my mech is supposed to look like that. So finally, will this game be Souls-like? Well, there's good evidence to suggest that it will be. So my first piece of evidence is this official press release that I was lucky enough to receive from Bandai Namco. There's a line here that I haven't really seen talked about anywhere else. Here, it calls Armored Core 6 revived and reimagined, but now introducing groundbreaking gameplay found in the developer's recent action games. From Software's recent action games are all Souls-likes. I don't think they're talking about Deiracine here. Now, just how Souls-like Armored Core will be remains to be seen, but From Software have really doubled down on the Souls-like formula in the last nine years since Armored Core 5, and I imagine they're very keen to bring Souls fans into the Armored Core universe. It would breathe new life and popularity into this niche series. Fans want something familiar to ease them into playing the new series. And I see a lot of people arguing that this won't be a reboot of the Armored Core franchise because well, it's got the number six at the end, right? So it's just a continuation. But from what I understand, Armored Core has been soft rebooted so many times throughout its cross-gen life cycle. So that number six might not mean much. Keeping a number at the end of this potentially Souls-like reboot might just be in keeping with tradition at this point. But what I really want to talk about is how much all of this really lines up with the Armored Core leaks that were posted on Reset Era earlier this year. So according to user Red Licorice, they received a customer survey about a new AC game with screenshots, descriptions, and two 30-second videos of gameplay. And looking back at these leaks, they're pretty much 100% credible now, as a lot of what this leaker said has since been corroborated by the new Steam page. And therefore, now whatever else the leaker said is now also very reliable, and they said that the game does indeed have Souls-like elements from the videos that they saw. Now, previous Armored Core is clearly very removed from Souls-style combat, and I have no idea how the team is going to tweak things, but listen to how this leaker describes the boss fight gameplay that they saw. They say, 
the boss fight seemed very souls in terms of speed and style. The player started afar, locking on firing guns, then closed in and attacked melee, and the speed and movement all seemed very familiar in a Souls style. If I had to guess, I'd say this boss was like an Asylum or Taurus Demon style early boss. The boss had a life bar on screen, at the top of the screen, if I recall correctly. Very simple, but it was more red LED styled, futuristic as you might expect, angular edges on the life bars rather than straight rectangles. So with the press release and these leaks, I'm now very keen to see gameplay and very curious how they'll tune the combat to be more in line with their recent action games. I'm also very curious to see how long-term fans are responding to all of this. I'm admittedly very new to this series, so if you're an old fan, please do sound off in the comments. We all want to hear from you, most of all, I think. Are you excited to return to this world? Are you wary that it might stray too far from the series' roots? Does Armored Core have, like, poison swamps that we should know about? Anyway, regardless of how Souls-like it is or isn't, the game has been in development since at least 2017. And according to the new Steam page, its development from Miyazaki as director has since been passed on to Masaru Yamamura, who was the lead game designer of Sekiro. So while I can't really imagine what the combat is going to be like, I'm confident that it's in good hands at the very least. It sounds like Miyazaki handled development and direction of the game when it was in its early concept stages and then passed its direction on to be handled by someone else or another team. And last but not least, I want to explain why I'm kind of excited for the story. So from what I've read, Armored Core's stories tend to hit a lot of the same notes every time. The world has experienced some sort of disaster, and corporations and governments and rebels are all fighting for control. No matter how many times the series is rebooted, there's always these same story notes that seem to be explored uh, during mission briefings, usually. Honestly, these stories seem kind of dry to me, but there's one new element to this Armored Core that intrigues me. So the Steam page mentioned that mysterious new substance, but the leaks that I talked about are actually using a different, older name for the substance, presumably back from when the game was earlier in development. They call this substance melange. Now, melange could be a reference to a French word, which means mix, as this mysterious new substance is a mix naturally but I think the inspirations of the word melange go deeper. So there's this book, and recently again a movie called Dune, that I know many of you are aware of, and like Armored Core, it's a piece of science fiction, and its entire story revolves around a substance called the Spice Melange, which is commonly referred to just as the Spice. Uh, this spice is essentially the rarest and most prized commodity in the known universe, to the point where, to quote the book, it was said that it was so valuable that one briefcase full of spice would be enough to purchase an entire planet. So Armored Core, the earlier version of it anyway, was calling this substance melange, just like in Dune. And in Dune, it's a really fascinating substance. Um, it has a variety of uses, but mostly it's used as a drug that, with regular exposure, uh, can significantly increase life expectancy, but also it broadens the human mind and the senses to the point where some humans are even able to see deeper into the past, present, and future. And it's this foresight that makes some people omniscient and it has basically been a substance that has enabled humanity to master interstellar travel across the universe. So maybe Armored Core's substance is deeper than just being this destructive force. Uh, the Steam page does say that it enhances communication, after all. It's clearly got a little bit more going on with it. And to me, it sounds like the familiar building blocks of a Souls game's story. Uh, Melange sounds a bit like the Elden Ring. It could be like the Dark Soul. It could be like Pale Blood. It's basically this thing that was established in a distant past that we don't quite understand, and yet it drives the entire story in this powerful and intriguing way. And also our character is a mercenary this time. We are on the lowest rung of the ladder again, you know, not unlike the undead 
or the good hunter or the tarnished. We have no real affiliation and just the world open with factions to fight for or against. It all sounds very from software and yes, I'm biased because my entire livelihood relies on from software at this point, but damn, I'm excited. So go and read Dune, watch the new movie, they're both classics, and subscribe to get more news on Armored Core when it drops. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.